What's up guys? So, after taking out the Blood Starved Beast, we now have a few paths open for us. Um, as you'll see, and I just realized like a complete noob, I didn't actually light the Cathedral Ward lamp the last time I ran through here. Now you notice this little guy in the corner here, he is actually completely harmless, oh, but sorry. the first time I played Bloodborne I was terrified by every little thing and I completely decimated him <laughs> and then only later realized that he's not an actual enemy but actually a complete scaredy cat and a little bit of a weirdo but he's totally harmless and he's nice enough to us so he's just going to kind of fill us in on a little bit of backstory and lore at Yarnum. So, he's basically just saying a lot of those NPCs that we come across in the windows, he's basically just saying, feel free to send them this way. So, what we're going to do first, though, is we're actually going to go, if you'll notice this door, which was previously closed, is now open. So, we're going to take this up to um, an area that has a couple little secrets and paths to it. So, you're going to, on the right, watch out for... Grandpa, who I can't believe actually just hit me a few times, but <laughs> don't do what I did and run right in his line of sight. Dodge more quickly towards the right to avoid the bullets. Open this chest. You'll notice I have a few more blood echoes than I previously left off with because I went back to Old Yarnum and grabbed a couple of those items that I had mentioned in the video that we just kind of missed for one reason or another, and I just didn't want to show you I, I didn't want to uh, lengthen the video longer than it needed to be by walking all the way oh shoot we just missed him oh wait you're gonna stay you know what we need to go we'll have to get him next time too but a couple little instances like that in old Yarnum that we missed last time I went back and got those items so they were mostly just blood shards and a couple other items that weren't necessarily that important also you'll remember we knocked Jura off his ledge and his badge landed in a spot that we couldn't actually pick up. Um, I loaded and went back in. I loaded, I or I quit. Once I had exited the area, you know, with the lamp and then went back, it was, and went back into the area, the, his badge was just sitting right on his ledge right next to his Gatlin gun. So, we now have that badge if you wanted to go pick that up, which will allow us to buy a few different types of uh, weapons should now be available in the shop that weren't previously available. Let's see, we got a machine, a crazy grandpa with a Gatlin gun, and this guy here. We're going to take out grandpa first, then we're going to dodge here. Shite. Oh, I missed the backstab. I didn't think the backstab was on, but it gave it to me. Blood vial. All right, the blood bullets going. You'll notice the sky has turned a little bit more orange. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. I am friggin... <laughs> I was just trying... <laughs> to parry him with my torch instead of my uh instead of my uh pistol so that is slightly embarrassing it's gonna be a couple guys trying to take you out here oh jesus christ beat it nerd some thick cold blood all right we're basically just trying to make our way I think there's a note over here somewhere. Or is that note on the next level up? It must be on the next level up. But we're basically just trying to make our way. Or if I missed it already. Maybe it's in here. I believe there's a badge in here that'll let us buy Ludwig's Blade, which is what we're going for. Here's that note. The sky and the cosmos are one, the choir. <laughs> the moon almost looks like a sun at this point. There is an item over here. I also realized when I was running back through Old Yarnum, 
where those werewolves all are, it's a little hidden. In one of the corners where those werewolves all run out, there is... Where those werewolves all run out is a... Is another pungent blood cocktail that I missed on the first time through. So I went back and grabbed that. Put silver bullets. And I believe this should be the badge. Hopefully. Radiant Sword Hunter badge. Sweet. So that is exactly what we need. And then this is going to be the door to another part of Yarnum, the Upper Cathedral Ward, which we will go to later, much later in the game. It's going to have some endgame content in there. That'll be one of the last things that we do. Drop back down. I think we need to go back inside and run down further. I believe that Ludwig's Ludwig's sword, when I checked, was 20,000 echoes. So once we get 20,000 echoes, we'll purchase his purchase his uh, sword, his blade. But so this is something I totally missed my first playthrough because it's a little tricky to get to. So if you miss this, don't worry about it at all. Oh wait, you're still alive. All right, nice. Now I don't have to come back for you later. Oh, that was creepy. Give me a little bit of the chills, I'm not gonna lie. All right, so this is a little bit tricky, but you wanna come, I think you could also kind of just drop there if you want, but I've always done it this way. I think either way will work. But you want to aim for those three wires and ropes Whew. and land on this little platform. And then you see that little door down there? You could faintly see this time. Just make sure your health is full and drop off that ledge. And then you're in. And that is very easy to miss the first playthrough around. But we are now in the abandoned old workshop. There's a couple things we're going to want to do here. Going to want to grab. Going to want to open this chest. Grab the doll's outfit. And then, let's see, we want to grab... Oop. Grab the old hunter bone. Grab one third of the umbilical cord. And there's another doll. Yep, doll. Okay, we're gonna light this lamp, but we're actually not gonna take that yet. Here it is. And then I wanna grab small hair ornament. And we're gonna wanna bring that back to our own doll in the hunter's dream. So, and that's actually all we're gonna be doing here. It's not really a whole area per se, just that little section. Let's see, get our torch out. Drop down, drop down, and now there's a pretty cool one-time enemy here, or at least one time in the base game. He's also in the Chalice Dungeon. Let's see if we can sneak up on him though. I feel like last time, I feel like when I dropped down on that pile, he woke up last time or see if we can get a get a sneaky little backstab on him while he hovers over the door although i kind of want to show him to you guys because he's kind of cool he's kind of like an apish werewolf wake up <laughs> all right so he almost, he's almost like a ram but Here he comes. Just stay cool. Stay cool, son. I'm, po I'm pretty positive you can repost him, actually. Just be careful of his fire. Jesus. It's Mr. McSpam. Yes, you can repost him. Nice. Even though he tried to spam the crap out of... And now, we're going to get the beast rune, and you could eat that son for trying to spam us. Although we've been a little spammy so far with the 
cleaver, but we're gonna go ahead and pick up Ludwig's, although Ludwig's small version of his weapon can be a little spammy too if you have a lot of endurance. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, Mr. Crow, not today. Rumbled hat and sweaty clothes, which, all right, his buddy is pissed. Um, so if you'll notice, that was the outfit of one of the... That was the outfit of one of the... Uh, of one of the townspeople that walks around. Let's see if we can kind of backstab on Mr... So this guy will actually... Shite. That's not what we wanted to do. This guy could actually come pretty close to one-shotting you or at early levels, so you want to be careful of him. Especially his, he has like a foot stomp kind of thing that he does. That is... Particularly a little dangerous. So he does take you to another area of the game. But I don't necessarily want to go there right now. So, we're just going to let him... Maybe he'll follow us in here and then we'll have more of an open. Will he come in here? Or is he too big for the door? Can you make it in here? <laughs> no, you can't. Oh man, I feel so cheesy when these situations happen because... I don't particularly want to take him out this way, but also... He's just standing in the doorway, so there's not much I can do about that. I should have probably realized he wasn't going to fit through here, but we'll have plenty of chances later to get a fair fight in on him. Sorry, buddy. Kind of cheesed you a little bit there. My bad. But yeah, so those, that enemy type will, the first time you die to them, will take you to, will take you to a different part of the game that we're just not going to go to right now. Cool. I think those enemies are kind of cool looking, but they don't really appear anywhere else in the game. They're only here, which I guess makes sense because we're in the old, the quote unquote old workshop area, and they do have a bit of a different, they do have a bit of a more old fashioned look to them. Or at least in my eyes, they do. <laughs> so, take them out. I think their dog ran down after me. I don't think there's another one. I think that was their dog. Yep, that was their dog. So, there's one more thing we want to grab in here. And these things are quite creepy. So we're going to want to... I don't know. Last time a Molotov cocktail took them out in one shot. But also, I had a decently high arcane stat when I did it. So I don't know if it'll still do it now, but it'll at least... Oh. St oh. Oh my goodness. He had a tiny bit of health. A fire blood gemstone. If you are going to do an arcane build, that gemstone is useful early on. So we're not going to be using that on this run through, but if you're using an arcane build, you can grab that and Going to take the elevator on out of here. And that's actually already going to be the end of this area, so... I don't know if we're going to get all the way to a boss in this episode or not, because it would make the episode quite long, but... Thick cold blood. And we're going to go ahead and open the gate, and you guys will see where we end up. Maybe we can do Yahargul in this episode. Wooden shield. Give me the my frames. <laughs> nice. Sweet. Take out you two. These guys are such great teaching tools for parrying. If you guys are having trouble parrying, practice on those guys because they have huge parrying windows. If you shoot, if you hit L2 to shoot pretty much any time, they lift their lift their sword up or lift their staff or stick or whatever it is you'll pretty much get the parry 
All right. All right, so you know what? While we have 20,000 blood echoes, I think now what we should after we use, now would be a good time to, perfect. Now would be a good time to go pick up Ludwig's Holy Blade. So like I said, Ludwig's Holy Blade is a little considered to be like a quote unquote noob weapon, but because it's pretty OP and easy to use. But if you're having trouble with the game and this is your first time playing through, or you just want to have fun, because that is much of the point of video games to have fun, uh, go ahead and use it because it's it's awesome once you just start slicing through certain enemies. If you're looking for a challenge, I would not use Ludwig's Holy Blade, but there it is. Let's see, so just to show you what else is available, cleaver, spear we have, axe you can now buy. Remember axe and cane were at the beginning. The Kirk Hammer is a fun strength weapon, the rifle spear for a bit of a blood tinge build, and the stake driver is what Jura, the guy we shot off the building, uses, which is fun to use. It's a little weird, but it's fun if you want to try something off the beaten path. But we are going to go for Ludwig's Holy Blade, and we are going to be absolute beasts. So let's go ahead and equip that masterpiece and let's see let's see this sweet glorious sword blade so two-handed so this is r2 let's see that was r1 l1 oh that is so cool all right let's, oh let's see l2 see now i'm gonna have to be more careful of my stamina because obviously doing these giant moves like this is going to make it's going to use a lot more stamina than the sock cleaver was using what's up Garmin? you got anything interesting if the beasts loom large and as every hunter so sometimes if you can't figure out where to go Garmin will kind of give you little hints about maybe what to think about but we're going to go ahead and fortify the holy blade sweet so what, what do we need next thing would be we need another twin bloodstone shard which we should come across relatively quickly uh so blood gems are super confusing when you first play like i had no idea what they were the first time i played but if you go into blood gem fortification choose your weapon you'll see right now we have two slots eventually we'll have a third if this is confusing to you, see where it says blood gem effects? Just for now, just to make it easy, pick whichever one just gives you the highest amount of damage. So where you say physical attack up plus 2.1, obviously it's more than 1.4. So just choose that one to make it easy for now. You can get really crazy and in-depth with the blood gem stuff, especially with the chalice dungeons. But on your first couple of playthroughs, it's totally unnecessary you could easily beat the game without ever going in the chalice dungeons or getting too crazy with blood gems all right so we don't have the carol rune tool yet so that'll be for later in the game i want to keep my insight down so we're going to go ahead and going to go ahead and use some of this so you could usually buy when you defeat certain bosses you can buy their gear usually this is where you would get a lot of their gear from. So let's go buy Gascoigne set. Some of this Ashen Hunter garb is pretty cool. This gray wool, this this set is actually pretty cool. So let's see, three, four, five, six. Oh, perfect. Let's pick all those up. Sweet, so let's go ahead and change up our outfit here. You know what? Let's cosplay Gascoigne, because he's a badass. You know what I wish? I wish that you could use Gascoigne's set, or I wish, you know how Gascoigne can two-hand his axe and use his pistol at the same time? I wish the hunter had the ability to do that, but we do not. So for now, we are going to go back to Cathedral Ward, and I think what we are going to do now is go... There's a couple different places we could go now. I think we might go around. 
I think we might go to the left and take out the easier enemies first. And I'll show you that in a second. We're going to go to a little courtyard area, and this is a good place to practice and learn some different things. There's probably not going to be a boss in this episode, like I said, now that I'm playing, because otherwise the episode would be way too long. But let's see what kind of damage this thing's going to do. <laughs> yep, one shot. <laughs> yeah, this thing is savage. Alright. Oh, this thing is going to be so fun to use. Don't let anyone tell you there's a noob weapon. It's so fun to use. I mean, I think honestly, I mean, for PvE, it's pretty fun either way. But I think... All right, now I'm just getting too cocky. I mean, a lot of people's point is that it's kind of cheesy to use when you're playing uh, online versus other characters because, you know, it can it's just so OP. I think when the game first came out, it used to be even more OP, and then they nerfed it a little bit. But if you're just doing PvE and you're not actually facing anyone with and you're not actually playing other players with it, I think it's a lot of fun to use. Oh, yeah, we might want to go. So, you probably hear. Oh, shite. I didn't even think that was possible. Or, I knew it was possible. I just didn't think it was going to happen. <laughs> Alright, so. Probably going to want to go take out that gunman before we take out. Before we try to take out Big Man. Because he's just going to keep annoyingly shooting at us. See if we can drop. Oh, eat some, son. Oh god. Ooh, just got a little lucky. All right, let's see if we can take this guy out. Yeah, because if you're trying to fight the big guy, well, this guy's down here doing that. It gets pretty annoying. So take him out first. Where'd he go? He's like right below us, I think. Yeah, he's just hiding down there. Maybe Big Man will follow us up here. Come on, son. Come up here. These guys aren't as hard as they look. They look scarier than they are, but they're... They're actually quite slow. Alright, I'm actually going to run down there and take that guy out. Because he's pissing me off to no end. All right, you douche, I'm trying to cheap shot me. Oh, can I repost you? Yes, I can. That is so satisfying. Eat some blood vials. Let's see what you give me, blood vials. All right, so I think what we're gonna do in this episode is we're gonna come down here and clear out this courtyard. Because this is kind of a fun area and a good way to get a lot of souls because there's a big man over here and a big man over there. And they're not too difficult to take out. Especially if you have a weapon like Ludwig's Holy Blade. Alright, where are you, my friend? Alright, come on, big guy. Oh wow, that completely whiffed. Might want to dodge. <laughs> again, this thing is just so damn beefy. And again, if you're a first time player and you're having trouble, use Ludwig's Holy Blade. Don't let anyone tell you it's like a noob weapon or easy mode or whatever. It's just fun to use. Uh, bum, bum. Dun, dun, dun. All right, let's see, there's some mad, a lot of mad men's knowledge in here that's tucked around different areas. Might be one more over here. Did we get them all? 
They kind of sit at weird angles behind the gravestones. I think we're good. Let's head on through here. So, there's going to be... You could already hear them, but there's going to be one of those little brain-sucking guys. Yeah, there he, there's our friend. Because they... By the way, if those guys get a hold of you, they will... They will... They will, and they will steal your insight. So we got some twin bloodstone shards there, so we can now level up. We can now level up our holy blade another level. So, as we come down here. Nope, Alfred's not here at this point in the game, but tempering bloodstone. Antidote. And we're gonna see a door that's gonna lead us to a path later in the game, but for now. We're gonna want a friend who wants the password. And we don't have the password yet, but keep that door in mind. So this area, if you when you first play the game, this area is super confusing. It takes forever to m get all this map area straight in your head. Um, because there's paths that just go all over the place. It takes forever to keep all this straight in your head, to be honest with you, so don't feel bad. Feels like you're just running all over the place. Let's see, we're gonna open this gate, and then you will notice where this leads us back out. Because as you've seen, pretty much everything in this game, you could buy, by the way, you can buy a badge that lets you open this door early, but I think it's 10,000 echoes, but it's kind of unnecessary to do that, in my opinion. You can get there pretty early in the game. And also, you're probably not... Re I mean, depending on what level you are, you're probably not ready to go in that area really underleveled anyway. So I feel like you can get there when you're supposed to get there. Bloodstone shard. Dodge. Again, dodging is all about timing. Just don't mash buttons. Take you out. Stone shard. All right, now would probably be a good time for some pebbles. Maybe some knives, we wouldn't use the knives. So throwing knives, let's see if we can drag, drag our buddy over. Come on, friend. Oh, is a. His other buddy's gonna come over here. Let's see, is that gonna take him out? Oh, it does stagger him. Oh, bad timing on that. <laughs> Jesus, this thing is fun. Alright, blood vials. Dodge the crazed crow. Maniac. No, oh, son. That is infuriating. <laughs> Here I come to save the day. Alright, so I think. Is there nothing in here? There's binoculars. There's people that are really good at like taking the binoculars and looking around and having all the geography mapped out in their head. So I don't want to get this wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the Great Bridge right there. I'm fairly certain. <clears throat> I'm not the greatest with the geography in this game and the lore. I know a little bit, but if you remember, I'm fairly certain first what I want to do actually before I... Yeah, let's get you. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> ah. Alright, we're gonna have to get that later. No, we can get it, we can still get it, come on, we can still get it. Oh, damn it. Alright. I think that was just a regular bloodstone shard anyway. So we're not really that necessary. Don't worry if you miss that. I've only gotten it like once maybe. Oh, we got a stagger, we got a stagger. Oh, come on. So, oh, there we go. So if you can get that little I should look up the name of that actual, actual, what those are called, rambling spiders or something. But if you can get that little spider, get it. If not, don't worry about it. But see that bridge there? 
I believe that is the Great Bridge where we fought the Cleric Beast. And he actually must sit... You know what's fascinating? I don't know exactly what this looked like behind the scenes, but he, that Cleric Beast must be hanging out like right there. Because this is where he jumps down to on the Great Bridge over there. I'll show you guys. You know they talk about old Yarnum being sealed off and all that and you know the different parts of the game but if we come here so this door on the other side of that I don't know if you remember on past where the great bridge lamp is that door that's where that door leads to that door leads to if you go to that door the great lamp the great bridge lamp would be on the other side of it but we cannot as I know, that door's never been open. <laughs> As you'll notice too, the sky is a little more of an orange tint now. Shite. <laughs> but, let's see, now... Alright, so there's a couple more things we can do. Um, bum, bum. I think we're going to go to the left. There's one more area we could clear out. And then I think that'll bring us... To the end of this episode depending on how long it takes see this guy has a flamethrower so be wary of him Ooh, didn't even get to use it oh speaking of we need to go get the flamethrower from gilbert and we should do that sooner rather than later Eat that. Mr. Phantom Priest Brother. I don't know what you're supposed to be. Part of the Holy Healing Church. Poison Knives, which we're going to come and use later. Let's see. Let's talk to our friend here. So, as you can tell, she is obviously a hooker. <laughs> what do you think this is? The red light district lady? Let's see. And we're going to of Odin Chapel. Now, some NPCs you can send to Isefka's clinic, which I think I need to go unlock that dialogue. But, like... All right, so don't tell him anything yet, because he just does the opposite of what you tell him, and you want to go to Isefka's clinic so that he goes to Odin Chapel, but we need to go talk to Isefka, because he just does the opposite of whatever you say, so we can't do that yet. Oh, you can poison me. That's interesting. All right, let's actually use some little bit of skill here. Oh, I forgot there's a guy with a gun. Use some skill instead of just well in a way with the Ludwig. But you're for sure gonna get you're for sure gonna get Ludwig's blade because you are pissing me off, <laughs> and your friend up there is gonna get Ludwig's blade too. All right, having some old Yanum cocktail some knives. Now we have plenty of poison knives. Dodge, dodge our friend up there. Come on, come on, friend. You're a plague ridden rat. I'm not a plague ridden rat. You're a plague ridden rat. <laughs> oh, it's just so satisfying doing combos with Ludwig's Holy Blade. This thing, I forgot how fun this thing is. I haven't done a playthrough with Ludwig's Holy Blade in the longest time, and I forgot how fun it is. <laughs> I am, son. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that is sweet. 
All right, I just recalled I missed, I literally missed some numbing mist. <laughs> There's one area I'm gonna go to. And I just remembered I missed. A watchman of Bergenworth guards the gate with a password, the sacred adage of the Grand Cathedral. So, that's our friend we talked to earlier. Go down the ladder. Quicksilver bullets. No, I took you out earlier. Um, here we're gonna go this way. Cut in here. I think the ladder is there. It is. By the way, I think this is Henri. <laughs> Fucking useless. <laughs> but that's gonna be a summon for a boss fight that's around the corner. I'm trying to decide if I want to face Vicar Amelia now or later. Numbing mist. I come down and drop over here. Let's see. I feel like there's one more item. There it is. The black messenger hat. So I'll show you what to do with that in a moment. Oh, I should have jumped there. I don't think there's anything up there, though. No, I could have jumped on that rooftop, too. I don't think there's anything up there, though. Easiest parry on this side of the galaxy. Take you out, Mr. Crow. There's going to be... One of these guys, our old friend from earlier. Now that I have the Holy Blade, this is a much more fair fight, because he's going to get staggered a lot easier than he was before. We're actually going to die to him on purpose later. I just don't want to do that now. See that, that little... That little thrust style downward stomp kick, that can actually kind of mess you up at this point in the game if you have low health. So you'll see, recognize our friend here, Eileen. So <laughs> she's going to say not to go near the tomb of Uden Chapel, which means... Which means we are for sure going to go directly to the Tomb of Odin Chapel. <laughs> so we're going to go do that immediately. Maybe that'll be the last thing we do in this episode. And then we'll go heal up. And then we'll have a part two or part two or so we're at around getting close to 40 minutes now. Let's see. Go here and you'll see Henrik. Oh, that sky is a deep red right now. There's that girl. We should go talk to her again. So if you'll see Henrik through the trees there, he's actually... You got to be careful because he actually can kill you. I don't know. I feel like he can see you here. Can you sneak through here? I don't remember. Aha. All right. He sees us. Oh, shite. Don't get caught on the gravestones. But you want to start fighting him, and Eileen is going to come. Oh, I chickened out. <laughs> I chickened out. I had him. So Eileen's going to join in the fun now. So you want to just make sure... Oh, God, Eileen, Jesus Christ. You just want to make sure not to aggro Eileen, because I believe... I've never had this happen before, but I believe she can get pissed at you. If you if you hit Eileen enough times, I'm pretty sure she can aggro at you. Oh, shite. Eileen, Jesus Christ. Oh my god, are you shitting me, Eileen? Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, that could be a little tricky because Eileen will... Oh, what? How are you still alive? Jesus Christ. So as you can see, Eileen can get in the way, so it's kind of tricky. She has, like, literally no regard for it if you're in her way or not. So it's kind of tricky to hit Henrik, Enrique, without... That wasn't necessary of you. It's hard to hit him without hitting her too. I don't know. I'm, I, I feel like I've heard before that you could actually either totally kill her or she could aggro at you if you hit her enough. 
So as you hear there, she now knows that we're the ones that took out Gascoigne. And it's kind of funny that we're now wearing Gascoigne's apparel. I just realized. Leave the hunting of hunters to me. It's a famous Bloodborne line. She now approves, and we could continue her quest line. All right, just make sure we exhaust her dialogue. And now it's a perfect time to go back. This is what we're going to do. We're going to run back to the Hunter's Dream. We're going to level ourselves up real quick. And then we're going to talk to Isefka so that we can open her ability, so that we can open the possibility of sending people to Isefka's clinic, which we're actually not going to want to do in the long run but just for the sake of showing you guys all possibilities. So I think we could level up the Holy Blade now. Fortify, Holy Blade, and level that up. The rest of the weapons for now doesn't really matter. I mean, we're really only gonna use the Holy Blade from here on out. So I don't necessarily have to level anything else up. Welcome, buddy. Let's level, oh, give small hair on him. Let's see that. What is this? What is this? A yearning, something I never felt before. So she What's has memories. Me? Tell me, Hunter. <laughs> Could this be joy? <laughs> Holy shit, is that depressing? <laughs> or happy, depending on how you look at it. So that tear stone can be crushed into a Welcome blood home. gem. What is it? But we're gonna leave that Very be. Well. Same with the red jeweled brooch. There's like a red jeweled brooch, um, Diamond, I guess. It's not a diamond, but you can crush that as well. Strength. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. I have more stats than I thought. All right. That's pretty good. The nice thing, too, as after you've played this game a bunch of times, it's nice never losing blood echoes, which I don't want to now have that happen but i haven't actually lost blood echoes in this playthrough yet i actually only have one death so far in this playthrough to and it was the first fight with gascoigne but that's not too bad just one so far i'll take it i've never take i've never done a completely deathless run but i'd like to keep it like under 10 would be nice that's my goal if i get, if we could have under 10 deaths for this run i'd be pretty happy with that Sweaty clothes, common Yanum clothing. All right, so we're gonna talk to Isefka, and she—I think she'll tell us. Oh, splendid. Let me ask you your soon oh, hunt, wait, I crap. Presume, oh wait, yeah, that's right, that's right. No, I'm right. Upon my Hippocratic oath, if they are yet human, I will look up this sickness. This time, the night is long. I'll well. That's right, I forgot. That's why. You find you can please. If you please. All right. So, I forgot. I forgot that that's why. So, if I really astute player will notice that Isefka sounded slightly different that time. And that's cuz that's imposter Isefka, which not a lot is actually known lore or story-wise about her or like where she actually comes from. I don't believe um but I just want to tie up a few odds and ends. I think if we go to the Great Bridge, we're going to go real quick, talk to Gascoigne's daughter. I just want to make sure I tie up all loose ends, but we're going to tie up. We're going to go talk to Gascoigne's daughter one last time. I feel like there's one more thing you can tell her. And then we are going to go send a lady to Uden Chapel that if you recall i mentioned her earlier in the game we're gonna go grab her real quick before i forget about her later in the game because there's so many things in bloodborne to remember if you don't have like actual notes written down which maybe i should have done but i think so far i've remembered everything i am and it's always fun in bloodborne too and any game like this like when you struggle in the beginning going back to where you were to, to see like how far you've actually come because when you go back you could pretty much just decimate anything in your path and that's always fun actually you know what let's do this come on 
And it's always fun to do things like this after you've... Ooh, sword right. I guess it's better you took it in the face and not up the butt. Turn around for us, son. Grab those vials. And the sky turns even more orange. Alright, so... Whoops. Take those guys out first instead of just sprinting down here like a noob. Like I did last time. Let's see if I could just probably take these guys out it in one shot at this point. You'd definitely be a little more reckless at this point. Probably not a good habit to get into, but after you leave and then come back to this area, you pretty much are good to go. As you remember, Gascoigne's daughter is right through here. No response. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I thought you could talk to her again, but what I wanted to do anyway was go find... Shoot. Ver... Sometimes some of this stuff gets kind of confusing. How do I get to that lady from here where the dogs are? You know what? I feel like she... I feel like through here. I feel like this would be the quickest way. Like I said, I've played this game so many times, and even so, I still lose track of... Yeah. And even so, I lose track of stuff sometimes. It's just so hard to keep everything straight. Oh, I got a right. I'm kind of proud of myself for remembering that. I did not know you can come out of there. Alright, now let's talk to you. All right, we're gonna tell her not of a Sefka's, but of Odin Chapel. Tell her of Odin Chapel, and now gonna bold Hunter's Mark on on out. So I'm just trying to wrap up a lot of loose ends in this episode, but can bold Hunter's Mark out of here, and we're gonna go do one more thing. We're gonna go tell one last guy about Odin chapel before I forget about him see that door see the gate at the end there's a door to the left there by the way that's the door I was talking about earlier that leads out to that previous area where we're in that I was saying the great bridge is on the other side so Cathedral reward it seems like we're kind of jumping around a lot now which we are to a bit but sometimes a lot of times in these games one thing I feel like, see, people have different opinions on this, but I feel like it's just so, if you never look anything up at all, which I probably recommend on first playthroughs to try and not look stuff up, which is ironic because I'm doing a walkthrough for beginners, but it's, you'll get spoiled on certain things, but also it's like impossible to figure everything out on your first playthrough. Like it's almost impossible that you would, here's the... Here's the hooker. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I should give you the curtsy gesture. Receive blood treatment for now. And she'll basically give us something pretty equivalent to Isefka's vial, the blood of Ariana. But here's the other lady we sent here. She was the crazy lady outside the dogs. She'll eventually give us sedatives. I don't believe she will now. Yeah, she's really skeptical of us now, but I was saying it's almost impossible to find where everything is on your first playthrough. Like, there's some things that's just like, there's just no way you would have ever found that. Or, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just not observant, but there's like so many things where I'm like, I would have never in a million years found that on my own. But then there's also some things that if you didn't, if you look them up and you spoil yourself, but then you come across them later, or you come across them naturally on your own, it's way more exciting. So it's just kind of like a balance, you know? Different people like to do it different ways. But we're gonna go grab... There was one more... Uh, am I going the right way? No, I am not going the right way. I don't want to cut through here. There was one more guy. We're actually gonna tell him... We're actually gonna tell him about Isefka's clinic. Because he is the skeptical man, and he is just going to do the opposite. He's like a little kid. He's just going to do the opposite of whatever we say. Although we just did that too. Hylian told us, don't go to 
Odin Chapel and we went directly to it. I think, are you here? So we're actually going to tell him Isefka's clinic. Yeah, sorry. Too sharp for that bollocks. Yep. <laughs> All right, so now <clears throat> he is going to run on over to... He's going to run on over to uh, Odin Chapel because we told him to go to Isefka's clinic. So he's going to do the opposite. And we are now... I think that's going to wrap up this episode. Let's cut back through... Here, we can go this way. Cut through here. And... Oh. Oh, that was a mistake. Son! I know you were gonna live, but not today. If you need to conserve endurance, that short sword is much more useful. Bam, but now I think that is where we are actually going to end this episode. And in the next, we're going to take on a couple NPC hunters. And I think that is going to be a good time to make ourselves make our way over to Hemwick Charnel Lane and then come back and take on Vicar Amelia. And I think that's the order we're going to go in. Um, thanks for stopping by, guys. I will see you in the next episode. Have a good night. Peace.